Hey Spanish learners, in today's episode, I'm taking you all the way back to the beginning. How we got started, where we got started, and then how we grew into the company that we are today. Today is our origin story. Come join us. Here we are back at today's school. And it's been a long journey. So let's start from the beginning. Ron, this is my my last day um, here in Houston, in Texas, in the United States, before I go down to Guatemala. And the beginning starts after high school. So I ended up graduating high school and then going off to the Marine Corps. Spent four years there. From there, I went to college at Trinity University. Had a really great experience there. Afterwards, I ended up finishing school and then getting a job as a consultant, specifically for the telecom industry. That company was Hitachi Consulting, and I ended up learning a ton about telecommunications, the internet, how it worked, so on and so forth. After about two years of doing that work, I felt like that wasn't my calling and I didn't really feel like that's what I wanted to do for uh, the better portion of my life. And so I had the opportunity to actually go down to Guatemala. One person that I do want to talk about a little bit is my friend Brandon. So the story behind Brandon is that he and another friend Doug came down to Guatemala to learn Spanish before I did. When I was in consulting, I decided well, when am I ever gonna get another chance to visit Guatemala? So they invited me down and I ended up taking the offer. One of the things that he said to me, Ron, I really feel like God's telling me to quit your job in the US and move down here and be the next director of the Shield Center. And at that point I was like, okay, thanks. Uh, didn't say no, didn't say yes. Within three to four weeks, my life completely changed in the US to the point where I felt like all signs were pointing to Guatemala. So I ended up selling everything that I owned. So at this point, I'm like, okay, well, I guess I'm gonna go down. And Brandon says to me, hey, Ron, you should probably learn some Spanish before you become the director of this school and your staff only speak Spanish. He said at that point, have you ever heard of a program called Skype? Mind you, this was 2009. And I said, yeah, I use it all the time for work and stuff. And he says, well, there's a teacher here that I know who happens to have an internet connection at her house. How about I put you guys in contact and then you can start taking classes online. I said, that's a great idea, let's do that. So I ended up getting connected with her and her name is Maria Jose. And she does a great job of teaching me how to speak Spanish. I am Skyping her from my hotel room in Dallas at the time. So let's fast forward a little bit to when I actually had to come down. And that was December 27th, 2009. Okay, so I just arrived here at huh? Guatemala Airport. So I ended up coming down and I didn't actually start my new role until the next year. And by the time I arrived, one of the things that was super amazing to me was that I could actually understand about 30 to 40% that was coming at me. Well, this is great. And even more so, I could form some sentences and I could communicate to a degree that was satisfactory for only having five weeks of Spanish. Aquí. Aquí. Sí, como aquí. Uh -huh. aquí. Pero no aquí. So I ended up taking the job and I started working for Nuestros Tejados, the God's Child's Project, where I was the director of a school for impoverished kids for about two years. Now, this was a really great time in my life in the sense that it was an opportunity for me to learn about kids and learning about education and how to be an educator. And this was really, really cool. The opportunity that I found was really unique. So it initially came from my Spanish teacher, Maria Jose. She was telling me that in a traditional Spanish school, they don't have consistency with their students. You have high seasons of tourism, you have low seasons of tourism. 
my thinking was, how can you plan for life like that? That never made sense to me. So what I told her was, you're an excellent teacher, and I'm sure there's someone in the world who really wants to learn Spanish, and that could be somebody who would be willing to learn Spanish online. I thought about the internet, and I thought about the opportunities that the internet brought us. It's just that the internet connection was very spotty, the internet connection in general in Guatemala, especially at home connections, were not very stable. So there was a huge problem with that, and nobody figured out a way to remedy that situation. And with my technological background and my just desire to figure out things and how to make things work, I believe that I could do it better than anyone else. Nobody really wants to come down to a third world country and figure something out and live here for many, many, many years. I was willing to do that, and so I thought that this was a perfect opportunity for me. And for me, I have always been fascinated with culture, and this was a perfect opportunity to blend my passion of culture, people, technology, and education all wrapped into one. Thus, Spanish Academy was born. When I was acquiring my customers, my early customers, I started making some phone calls. And I kid you not, I actually went through probably over a thousand phone calls in order to get our first customer. And our first customer signed up, loved the program so much, stayed with us for about four years. Right now, we are at the very beginning where my first office was. This is where Spanish Academy originated. This is our first office, and to be honest, it was very, very small. It was an apartment. So they are a travel agency as well as an internet cafe, and behind there, they actually live. It's a family who lives there, and then they rent the upstairs. And that's where I rented out the office, and then we started with one teacher, and we had two bedrooms and a kitchen and a living room. And then from there, we started growing. But again, we started from very humble beginnings. It allowed us to grow up to seven teachers before we moved to our next building, which is where we're headed next. Let's go. All right, so we are here at the second office of Spanish Academy. Now it has turned into a hostel, which is a lot different than what it was. Bumblebee Hostel has been gracious enough to, to let us take a tour of our old place. So come on in. This used to be the admin office, and now they've, they've turned it into a hostel. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I like what they did with the place. So this building, is essentially four small buildings with two floors each. So there were eight potential office buildings, um, seven if you include one of the meeting rooms here in the kitchen. And so this is where we grew from, I believe it was um, seven teachers to approximately 20, 25. And so we won't have access to everything, but at least the bottom rooms we will. teachers per room and so that's how we came up with the teams of eight. Also with my military background what ended up happening was I started thinking from a military structure sort of thing um, in terms of squads, fire teams, uh, platoons, uh, so that whole structure stuck with me. So um, in the military, in the Marine Corps, the way that we were structured, we were structured in platoons and then the platoons were broken down into squads and then those squads were broken down into fire teams. So then I, I, I kind of took that structure in terms of leadership and chain of command and I've implemented it into my business and into the company. So I have to give credit to the Marine Corps, Ura Semper Fi, and all the things that they taught me. So I'm really proud of that and um, this is kind of where we're stage two of our growth has been and we're, we were just getting started and so it was a beautiful place for while we were here and we were really thankful um, to, to have the opportunity to be in this location. We 
well, yeah, so here we are back at today's school and it's been a long journey and we've actually come a very long way from that little apartment all the way to two buildings and we're still getting started and we're continuing to grow and we're really excited for where the future is taking us. When I initially came down, my mission was to help people and to serve the less fortunate. And all I really wanted to do is make a difference in this world and on these people's lives. And I feel like here at Spanish Academy, I really get the opportunity to do that, more so every day. And so I feel very fortunate to be where I'm at, to work with the people that I work with, and to serve the community that we serve, not just in the United States, but all over the world. And so, again, I think we're doing such a wonderful thing. I am very proud to work with the people that I work with and just super pumped for the future. Well guys, that brings us to the present day. I hope this video has given you a lot of insight as to who we are as people and who we are as a company. Because at the end of the day, we're more than software. We're human beings and we have a vested interest in seeing you and your students succeed. If you got value out of this video, be sure to click the like button, hit subscribe, and the notification bell. Well guys, that concludes this episode. We'll see you in the next video. Adios. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I really, really hope you like this video. If you're ready to take your Spanish to the next level, i.e. fluency, feel free to take a free class with one of our awesome and great instructors. Just visit us at www.spanish.academy slash free dash class. And we teach Spanish one-on-one -on -one in a very personalized way, depending on how you learn best. Additionally, it's an incredibly flexible program so you can schedule your classes around your busy life. Take your first step towards fluency today. Adios.